Hey everybody, welcome back to Hoosier Mama Restorations. I have a three week project. So excited to get started. I've had this on the calendar, um, on my schedule for a while. Um, this set was inherited um, from my client's uh, mother-in-law, her husband's mom. Um, so it's very well-made furniture. It's a French dining set. Uh, along with a TV stand that they inherited. So the legs are off of, obviously they're off of the uh, tabletop here. And this is the bottom of the hutch. Um, I'm going to do the top of the hutch part uh, probably the third week. Um, and then there's six chairs that go along with the table. There's two leaves, so we're looking at a table that's over almost 100 inches long. And then we have this um, server buffet TV stand. It opens here in the middle. Um, has a ton of uh, detail here on the front. These are great pieces. So um, there is a lot of uh, like minor problems with the wood. I'm gonna have to do wood filler on spots like this. Uh, the end piece came off the bottom of the leaf. Uh, there's just a, a lot of odds and ends to get uh, tidied up here. Uh, remove hardware. And um, I'm gonna actually be stripping the top this week of the server, the tabletop, and uh, the bottom of the buffet and the leaves. So um, that's my first week, and then each week I'll um, do a video showing you, um, you know, what that week's going to entail. So um, my first thing I'm going to do is strip these tops. I don't want any stripper to get on the bottom, so I am going to tape. The bottom off and put plastic around it in case uh, the stripper drips or anything like that so um, yeah I have a lot of work to do really excited to get started and I will um, show you videos of the stripping process and we're gonna get started let's get going here's an example of uh, part of the prep work that I do for each project uh, this one, I am stripping the top, so everything on the bottom part is going to be covered that I'm going to be priming and painting. Um, this is a server, so it does open up. And so I tape that in case any of the stripper went in between um, those grooves right here. I didn't want that to... Uh, seep through and get on it because it's all black um, underneath. Um, it's just a, a probably a multi-purpose uh, material that they put on there so that you could open those uh, that server buffet up and have an easy uh, wipeable surface. So that is not wood underneath there, but I still don't want any stripper to get on there because I don't know if it'll eat away at uh, whatever material that is. So it's been wrapped all the way around and taped off. When I opened the lid, I accidentally pulled some of the tape. Easy fixed. Um, another thing here too, I'm working on the bottom half of the leaves. Um, a lot of the times they put a small thin piece of wood on here um, some would call it veneer. This, I believe, is just, is real wood. It's just a thin piece. This is the only part that I saw that's bubbled. So I'm going to get some, uh, Gorilla Glue in there that sets for 15 seconds. Um, sets in 15 seconds. And then I'll use my clamps. And I'll clamp that down overnight. So I'm ready to, um, start stripping all the wood tomorrow. So um, all of this is going to be covered. I still have a few. Um, I just have one more side of the leaf and then I have the bottom of the buffet to get covered. The table bottom is covered. 
Um, so yeah, we should be good to go. So I'm going to get that glued down and um, should be good to go to move on to the uh, bottom of that buffet and get that covered. I think this is so cool that uh, the Gorilla Glue, they've made it with a brush and nozzle. So it's so much easier to get into these spots with glue compared to that nozzle. And then you can just dip right back in and really get in there. So you know that you got all that glue really far back in there, as far as you can go. So awesome. Thanks, Gorilla Glue, <laughs> for making all of our lives easier who do restorations. And then I'm going to take this clamp and get this clamp down. Let's see. Oh, a little bit more and I'm gonna let that set overnight so I'm gonna put one right here actually I'm gonna flip this so that I can actually open it a little bit more there we go so I can tighten this down There we go, there's one. And then I'm gonna do this other corner here. A little bit more room. So I'm gonna go on the bottom side with this one. Cause I am running into the other one. So we're going to go right on that corner and get that pressed down. All right, there we go. Nice and tight, like it never happened. Just did another repair on uh, one of the table leaves. Uh, the bottom part uh, had come detached, so I had to get the brad nails out. I'm not sure if they used any glue. Um, I think they did because when it broke off, um, it was a little jagged. So I used my uh, Gorilla wood glue. Um, it will expand and it kind of turns into, looks like a foam. Um, so any excess after it dries uh, that comes out, it looks like foam. So you just use your utility knife and cut it off. So um, I have the C-clamp and my other clamp on here. And I'm going to let that set overnight. The wood glue, it's best to let that set overnight. Um, and it will be good as new tomorrow. Okay, I have all my prep done. Everything is wrapped to protect from... Um, the Jasco stripper. Um, I have all the repairs made. Um, this should be good as new. So take this off. There we go. Like it never happened. And I'll take my utility knife and get that extra wood glue off. Turns into kind of, it almost feels like foam that's hardened. And I'll take my utility knife and uh, cut that off. But if you ever have any jagged um, pieces of wood that don't necessarily fit exactly together, then um, you're going to want to use the Gorilla Wood Glue because it will expand and fill in all those gaps. So that is fixed. 
I'm going to take this and get this covered, flip that back over, um, and then my uh, piece is completely fixed. Uh, the bubble that was there, no more bubble. Um, I use this super glue, uh, the Gorilla Super Glue for that. That locks in uh, hammer top for 10 seconds. So my next step is uh, I got a new sander. Um, it's hooked up to my dry vac system so that I can minimize my dust. Um, I'm going to wear my uh, respirator for sure. I'm going to loosen up these uh, wood grains with a 220 grit on both the leaves and then tabletop, buffet top, and uh, server top. So I'm going to get that done first and then I'm going to start applying the stripper and I'll take you through that process too. So stay tuned. I am ready to strip the wood. I have my Jasco stripper in the spray bottle. I'm going to uh, mist it on, um, get every single nook and cranny that I can, and I'm going to let uh, that set on for 15 minutes and then come out and check it. Um, I have a heavy duty scraper and then I have some wire brushes and some smaller scrapers too. So we'll see what works best. Um, see how well the finish comes off. Um, if it's not coming off very easily, then I will uh, respray and let it set for a little longer. Make sure you have your gloves and your ventilator and then I have I'm gonna uh, keep all of my metal paint cans so that I can scrape um, all the stripper off into that and then dispose of it properly since it is uh, toxic I can't put that down the drain so yeah I'm gonna get started and then I will see you guys in 15 minutes well, I'm pleasantly surprised with uh, the first coat, how much it took off. Did a pretty good job. Um, this is a really old table. It had a very slick finish, so there's a huge, huge um, coat of finish on there, stain, polyurethane. So um, you just need to keep trying. Uh, it says on there, just reapply. So I'm gonna go a little bit thicker with the stripper. And then um, I'm probably going to wait about 20 minutes, five more minutes longer than last time. And um, come in here and scrape again. And I may have to reapply on some more stubborn spots. Um, just got to go with what the wood's going to give you. So I'll be back in about 20 minutes. Well, that second coat did the trick. Look at that. All that old finish is off. Um, now I'm gonna take a microfiber cloth with um, and dip it in some stripper and do the edges. And then um, apply like right here, there's a few more spots that are being stubborn. So that should finish it up. And then um, I'll wipe everything down with mineral, mineral spirits and get all of the gunk off, the rest of the uh, stripper off. And then I will move on to the buffet <clears throat> bottom, uh, do the leaves next, and then this uh, TV stand buffet server. Um, she, I think she's going to use it as a TV stand, but um, it has those bu buffet server. That she probably just doesn't have room in it, room in her dining room for it. So um, anyways, well on our way. I'm so pleased with how the stripper worked. Um, that's amazing. So I'm going to uh, get that rag and uh, get all the extra spots uh, wiped down and uh, move on to the next piece. Starting to strip the buffet. Look how satisfying this is. Got all that stain polyurethane just come right off. I applied a lot more stripper on the buffet top than I did the tabletop the first time. So be liberal with it, but not too much where it's just slopping around off the sides. But this is just one pass. Look at that. 
That is like since probably the 50s or 60s. All the finish. Oop. So I'm going to get the rest of this stripped off. And I haven't even sanded this tabletop yet. That is stripped. Um, I used my wire brush and both of my scrapers. I uh, took three rounds of stripper for that. So I'm thinking since I applied this so liberally, um, two coats is probably going to be good. So I'm going to get this finished up. And we're moving right along. Everything's looking just the way we wanted it. Uh, I have everything stripped from yesterday. The wood's looking great. It's the table, leaves, and then the buffet. So uh, it took a few rounds. Uh, the table took about three rounds um, to get it fully stripped, but that's okay. Um, sometimes they're a little bit more stubborn uh, than other pieces, so um, we just got to roll with it. Uh, so today I'm going to uh, sand everything with a fine grit and get everything really smooth and um, get everything cleaned off, get it nice and clean, and then hopefully by the end of the day I'll be um, putting on my first layer of stain to dry overnight so uh, that's my goal today so I have my ventilator uh, have my sander hooked up to my dry vac system here and then I can take the attachment off and put the brush on and um, uh, suck up all of the um, all of my dust sanding dust so I love being able to do that so I can keep it clean in here and uh, yeah everything should be good to go so that's my uh, goal for the day so I'll let you know how it's going and um, tomorrow morning uh, well before I stay and hopefully this afternoon I'll be able to show you what the tops look like all pretty and sanded and then we'll start applying the uh, aged barrel that's the stain that we're gonna use so it's like a mid-tone brown very pretty color so I'm gonna get started I'm so excited I'm ready for stain we're gonna do the uh, aged barrel it's a mid-tone uh, brown stain um, yesterday it took me a full day to strip off the uh, tops here. They had multiple, multiple layers of stain and polyurethane. Uh, this is a French set. Um, I'm guessing from the 50s or 60s, it was my client's husband's mother's. So um, it's pretty old. There were a ton of layers. So I knew I had to strip it first and I used the uh, Jasco um, a stripper, which is, uh, really, really good. Uh, I, ha I didn't have any problems with it. Uh, apply liberally and it'll come right off, but you do have to go back and sand, uh, to remove anything, um, that was left behind, any excess stain, any gunk from the, uh, stripper. So I used a, uh, Let's see, I used a 120 grit uh, to remove everything, um, and that included all the edges, every tiny little piece of wood that you see. And then I went back with a 320 grit to make it buttery smooth. It is so smooth. So um, after that, I cleaned everything. Um, I used my shop vac here. Um, I have a brush um, on the end of the hose, um, and then I use the tack cloth to get any excess uh, sanding dust off uh, before I apply stain. So uh, I'm going to get going. Wow, the wood looks so good. Um, I have three coats of stain on. Uh, everything is dry. I put the leaves with the table. Look how huge this table is.
so big. I bet it's over 100 inches long. Uh, the top of the buffet looks great. Got all the different wood tones on there, reds and gold. Same thing with the table and same thing with the uh, TV stand. So it's looking great. Um, next thing I'm going to do is get three coats of semi-gloss polyurethane on and that will uh, make our wood look even more rich. It'll seal it and um, it'll be good to go. So I'm gonna get started. So while the uh, first coat of polyurethane is drying, I'm gonna uh, work on this cabinet. I need to take out uh, the wire and it's just held on by um, some staples. So I'm gonna get some needle nose pliers and remove the staples and get those out. Um, the inside of the um, hutch cabinet is not going to be painted, so I'm going to be able to tape all of that off, all the openings. So the front and the back of the doors and then uh, the outside obviously will be painted. Um, the doors do have these back plates. Uh, there's tiny little nails. There's four in each back plate. There's a screw in the back of the knob, so that's easy to take out. So, um, what I did was just use my needle nose pliers, and I was actually able to get a hold of those um, tiny little nails to take those out. Because um, I didn't want to paint them and then have to worry about removing all the paint. Um, everything's going to be um, white. Um, it's a variation of white. So, I wanted to leave the, the hinges and all of the original hardware um unpainted because it's got this like bronzish gold um that goes with the wire and that's going to be a good contrast against um against that white with uh the stain new stain tops and then the back wood looks gorgeous and i actually got the table to match really well so um when it's all put together it's gonna look great so i'm gonna finish getting um, all of those back plates off and the wiring off, uh, and the doors. And then, um, another like tip is if you take something apart, take a picture of it before you, um, do it. So there's all these different attachments that need to go back on. There's, the, uh, the magnets, um, just take a picture of it so you know you get it put back and you're not uh, clueless when you go back, you know, in a week when you put it back on. So just a quick tip. So I'm going to get that done. So today is going to be finishing up the tops and uh, getting ready for primer tomorrow on the bottoms. Um, I have uh, one coat of polyurethane on and um, I've already sanded, cleaned all that off. Um, I had another repair to make over here on the side of the leaf. Um, this end piece right here was loose and the screws were also loose so the whole thing was just wobbly. Um, so I got that piece glued down, I got it screwed back in and then I reattached that piece um, last week, I showed you in the video. So right now, before I do another coat of polyurethane, I'm going to um, get all these spots filled in on the bottom of the table. Uh, there's one down here, right here by where the legs go. I need to fill in this with wood filler and this spot. And I don't think there's any over here which is good. So I have two spots on the table. I started on the leaf here. Um, that will, I'll let that dry overnight. I like to use, uh, it's called, it's upside down, uh, plastic wood. Um, this is like the best stuff to work with. So uh, just fill that spot in as best you can. And then uh, let it dry 24 hours, and then you can sand it smooth. 
and it'll look like it never happened. So I gotta get that spot fixed. So that's three, four. Uh, let's see if there's any over here. Nope, not over here. So yeah, that's my day. Um, oh, and I also wanna get the legs back on the table um, so I can get everything primed. I also have hardware to take off and uh, I need to scuff sand uh, tomorrow, but really I need to get the polyurethane uh, on last today. Let that dry overnight. That will be the last coat. And then um, I'll get the tops covered so um, I can protect everything from primer and paint. So everything's looking great. I'm going to go ahead and uh, get started for the day. Hey everybody, I just wanted to show you um, some woodworking tips. Um, you can see the difference here. Uh, this has been given two coats of polyurethane and sanded between each coat. And then this is the third and final coat. So you can see uh, the difference there, huge difference. Um, but you'll have to sand between each coat and clean it um, because if not, uh, you're not going to get that smooth surface that everyone wants and uh, you're going to have dust in your polyurethane and it's not going to be level. So you have to sand it with a high, high grit. Uh, I recommend a 320 grit. I mean, it still looks beautiful and it's still smooth, but you want to get it to look like this. So that's the final coat on there. Um, that'll dry it overnight. And it is semi-gloss, so you can definitely see the shine, but it doesn't get much better than that. It looks gorgeous. So I'm going to do um, another coat on the rest of the wood tops here. And then I'm gonna start working on taking off um, all the handles and uh, there's little nails on all of these too. So I need to get all the hardware off, um, get everything taped, I need to tape the hinges and uh, get everything ready for uh, priming tomorrow. So, but I just wanted to show you the difference between polyurethane on the final coat and what it looks like after you sand that second coat. So it's a huge difference, but this is your final result. And it's just perfection. Love it. Just had to show off how good these tops are looking. The polyurethane is complete. It's your table. The buffet top. Ooh, looks like glass. Highlights all those wood grains. Here's the leaves. And then the TV stand or server. She's gonna use it as a TV stand, but it's a uh, buffet server that top opens up, but it'll be cute as a TV stand as well. So um, if you're looking for the best brush to use for stained polyurethane, this is it. Pretty white bristle, oil-based paint stains and clears. It's a three inch brush. It's really easy to work with. Um, it is expensive, but you know what? <laughs> it's the best out there and you can reuse it and reuse it. Um, as long as when you're done, you uh, use some mineral spirits and clean it out. And then you're gonna put it right back into this um, container and it will keep the shape of it. It has Velcro, there it is, it has Velcro. So you're gonna put that right back into it and hang it back up to dry um, and you're good to go. So the importance of, you know, the best products and the best uh, supplies that you can use, your tools um, will make a huge difference on how well your project finishes so it's well worth it. You know, sometimes when I get quotes, 
Um, <clears throat> when I do quotes, some people are like, wow, I just can't afford that, or that just seems like too much. And so I started doing these videos just so everyone could see how much labor goes into uh, refinishing. It really is a lot. But you have to take your time and you have to have patience. A lot of people don't, but luckily I do. And I love doing this for uh, my clients. I will do this till I can't anymore. So there you go, there you have it. I'm gonna start taking off all these um, back plates and hardware, taping off the hinges, and then I'm gonna put the legs back on the table so that I can uh, do primer tomorrow. So it's looking good. Uh, one more week, next week, I'm gonna do um, the chairs and the top of the china cabinet. So, and then pick up will be Friday. So a lot of work still ahead of me, but it, I have plenty of time, plenty of time. That'll be good. Okay, today I am going to prime. I have a, a few things to do before I can do that, but all my tops are done. Uh, that's the most labor intensive. So I'm very happy with the way they turned out. Uh, next thing I'm going to do is get those four wood filler, uh, spots that I had, uh, that I showed yesterday. I'm going to get those done, uh, sanded, smooth. Um, I need to cover the tops because I don't want to get any primer on these. And tomorrow I'm going to spray the, uh, top coat, but the semi-gloss looks beautiful. Um, I measured the table, it's 102 inches, so that is all labor. That is stripping, that is sanding, staining, polyurethane, and then sanding between each coat. So it was a lot of work, but it was so worth it. Look how beautiful these are. So I definitely want to get those covered and um, uh, protect them from any paint. I have all the hardware off, um, so now, like I said, the wood filler, I need to sand smooth and wipe everything down clean. Um, I've already sanded um, yesterday um, just to um, do a scuff sand before I prime. Uh, so I'm going to get the hinges taped off, get the tops covered. And then I have my um, respirator for when I prime. This stuff is so stinky, but it is the best. Um, if you're looking for anything to uh, prime, uh, this will, it's a bond coat, so it will help bond your top coats. And it's a stain blocker, so it will uh, seal in nicotine and smoke stains seals tannin bleeds which is the main thing that i need it for um which is also uh has to do with uh water stains sometimes um they can come out in the wood once you start applying your paint and um but mostly the tannin bleed which is a um chemical reaction from the original finish that comes out in um little blotches through your paint. Uh, they're either pink, blue, or a light brown, depending on the finish that the original finish they use. So they get that. Um, that's going to be put on by hand with a roller. And um, yeah, it should be ready to go. And make sure you wear gloves because if you get any of that primer on your hands, it's really hard to get off. So um, it's going to be um, a little bit shorter of a day. I started early. Uh, the kids were off yesterday from school, well, the past two days because it was MLK Day on Monday. Yesterday was canceled and um, got a really uh, full day in yesterday just getting the tops done and getting a lot of prep um, done for today. So, um, yeah, 
Today is going to be priming, and um, I can get that done, no problem. Um, have to go to uh, basketball, fifth grade basketball pictures for my son at four, and then we have practice tonight. So um, I have all my steps written down for each day, um, so I stay on track. Uh, next Friday is uh, the movers will be here to pick everything up, wrap it and pick everything up. So... Next week will be six chair frames and the top of the hutch, and I have a lot of that prep done, so um, I'm in good shape. So I'm going to get the tops covered, the hinges covered, do a little sanding on uh, the wood filler spots, wipe everything down, and to get my primer on. Okay, I'm about to use my stinky primer. Stinky, but it's the best out there. Um, I have all my tops covered, um, plenty of trash bags, plenty of tape, but hey, it does the trick. Um, every, all my spots are sanded for uh, the wood filler. I have all my hinges taped off so that I don't have to um, worry about uh, anything getting on them. Uh, I don't want to use like mineral spirits and have to like go back and like take all the paint off. So you don't want paint on your hinges because these doors, when they open and close, it's just going to be like rubbing and, um, you know, over time coming off. So it'll look like, it won't look very good. So everything is covered and uh, cleaned and I am ready for primer. So I'm going to get going. Um, I'm going to use uh, a foam sorry a uh a smooth roller and um you want to do a light coat don't you know just get in all your all your grooves and i'm also going to use a brush too to get in these little corners right here where um the roller won't go in but um yeah i have a lot of flat surfaces so i'm just going to use a brush and a roller and uh, we'll get her done so excited for today that's top coat day all the primers dry we have two coats on and it's looking really good um got good coverage on there and um the feel of it is um kind of rough so it's going to give my uh top coats even more durability and adhesion uh all i got all the prep done uh, before I primed so it was a full day yesterday of uh, prepping and priming um, and then today I'm ready for my top coat I have my Wagner sprayer my ventilator um, I started straining my paint uh, we're doing a semi gloss of the cabinet and furniture paint uh, it's called tell me a secret so it's just a variation of uh, it's got a little bit of a bluish gray uh, hint to it, but it's really a bright white. Uh, it's going to be really pretty with the tops. And uh, don't forget your uh, flow trawl to help uh, the flow and leveling in your gun. So yeah, I'm all strained. Um, probably going to need a little bit more in there and a little bit more flow trawl. And then I'll be ready for the first coat. I'm going to do three coats today. And then tomorrow I will do three coats of the semi-gloss polycrylic. So let's get going. So I have the second top coat on. Uh, after the first top coat, I had some more tannins come through the white. So I had to go back with my primer on a few spots and um, reapply before I did the second coat. But it's looking really good. I will check it again to see if there's any that I missed, but I think I should be, should be good. I don't see any more coming through, but once it's dry, I will check again. There's the table. I can't wait to take the top off. Look at those legs. They're so pretty. The buffet is great. It has so much character on it. And the white, I think the white just makes it look even more elegant. So after this is dry, I'm going to check again 
for tannin bleeds. Um, they're coming through um, brown, so definitely have to get those covered. Um, and then hopefully they're all sealed in, and when I do my sealer tomorrow, uh, I don't have more come out. So, um, but at that point, after two coats of primer, you're usually not going to be able to seal those in. But sometimes they're like about the size of a pinhole, so you're not really going to um, notice them unless you know that they're there. So, yeah, I'm so excited. Um, gonna let this dry and then uh, we'll see what we need to do after that. So we'll just play it by ear, but I just want to show you guys how great it was looking. All right, it's Friday. It's time to seal all my hard work. I have all the back plates on. Look at the hardware. Look like little keys. The back plates and the hinges. Um, really pop on that. Uh, I can't wait to see the hutch top on it, which will be next week. Um, it's too heavy for uh, me to lift on top with my husband. So the movers are coming next Friday, and she will get me pictures when she gets it all wrapped. But I'm really excited to get it sealed and get the tops off and uh, see, you know, all those gold and brown tones come out uh, with the hardware. Uh, I think it's going to look great. Look at how good the TV stand looks. Um, has all these extra little medallions. It's looking great. So the table is, um, I mean, I don't see any more tannins coming through at all, which is great because it's just like leaves you completely distraught when you've worked so hard you've done primer you've done top coats and then you've gone back and done more primer and more top coats and then uh, you still have some come through so I don't see any so I'm very happy with that but um, I have my polyacrylic semi-gloss over here on my prep table, it is strained and sealed into my sprayer. And uh, yeah, I'm going to get it in the gun, get my ventilator on, and we're going to do three coats of that today. And then we'll be able to take the tops off and do pictures. So stay tuned, see the gorgeous results. Okay, I'm in the final week of this three-week project. I have six chairs to do, two of them armchairs and a china hutch top. Uh, first thing I'm going to do is, after I got, I already got them sprayed off um, to get any cobwebs or like debris off of them uh, with my um, air compressor. So next I'm going to take my crud cutter, which is what I use for everything to clean. Um, Safe, fast, effective, um, non-toxic, biodegradable formula. So this is a really good cleaner. It removes uh, goo, gum, grease, and more. Um, I really like it. Uh, much better than anything else I've tried. So um, I am going to attempt to spray uh, the primer. And I got a new additive. Uh, it's an oil-based additive to help with the uh, flow through the sprayer. Um, I'm hoping that this will give me better coverage and I won't have to do it uh, by hand. Uh, the sprayer obviously is much quicker um, and I'm gonna get better coverage because I can do two coats in the mount. I can do one coat by hand. So uh, that would be a huge help. So we're gonna try that out today. Um, only need about two ounces of this oil-based paint additive to go into uh, the sprayer, so it really doesn't take much at all. And make sure you wear your uh, ventilator for sure um, to protect your lungs because oil-based paints are even worse uh, than your latex paints. But you should always just be wearing when you're doing woodworking, painting. Anything with chemicals, just wear your ventilator. 
uh, and uh, make sure you have filters on hand so that uh, you can change those out. So um, let's see, so two armchairs and two dining chairs. She asked me when I took the seats off to number each chair and each seat. So I've taken that off as like a 70s pattern, almost like a, a uh, like shag carpet type thing. So all the caning's gonna be removed and she's gonna do, um, she's gonna have a company that is an expert in removing caning and reupholstery. Um, these are gonna be a double padded seat with fabric and they're gonna match the seat pads. So it's gonna look great. She's gonna get me pictures once everything's done. So I'm gonna get these primed and while they're drying, I'm gonna work on the hutch top and I will show you that uh, when it comes time to um, prime that. So it's a busy day, busy day of priming. So I'm gonna get started. Okay, I have my ventilator on. All the chairs are cleaned. And I just tried the uh, oil additive. I actually ended up only using um, a little less than an ounce. And I have really good uh, viscosity here. So um, I'm going to try this and uh, let you know how it goes. Originally, I said about two ounces uh, per cup for the widener sprayer, but it doesn't need it at all. So the one ounce was great. So we're going to go with that. Um, if I need to add a little bit more, I do have some room. So um, I saved that over off to the side and we're going to try spraying this primer. Well, I'm very happy with how the primer sprayed with that new oil based additive. It's got a really nice uh, first coat on. And then I went back and um, did another coat just to give me more coverage because it's going to help that uh, top coat even more. But yeah, they're looking really good. So yay, that worked. Um, here is the hutch cabinet. I'm going to get everything switched out um, from the curtain um, and get the chairs back here. So I can get this taped off. I took all of the chicken wire out. Uh, it was stapled in and it is a beautiful color. It matches the hinges here, uh, this bronze color. So it's going to look really nice with uh, the Tell Me a Secret uh, white because we're going to leave this wood back here original because it is beautiful. It has all the different wood tones, just like uh, the top that I redid, all the tops I did. So there's golds, there's browns. Um, it's gonna look great, I cannot wait. Um, so right now I'm gonna get all these hinges. Looks like I have three, six, nine, twelve hinges to tape off. And then um, I'm gonna open up the doors because I'm gonna paint uh, the back and the front of the doors and then everything in between so I have a nice lip here that I can uh, tape all the inside off and then there's glass on the sides it is not removable uh, it looks like they glued it in so on the outside I'm gonna I started taping that get that taped off and covered and then I'll be able to prime it. It won't take too long to prime it. I'm also going to do the top too. So it's going to need a good cleaning after I get it taped. But we'll get there. So I probably have a good solid, I don't know, hour to two hours of prep. And then uh, I'll be able to prime this. So I'm going to get it going. It's top coat day for uh, the six chairs in the top of the hutch. So... Um, I've measured out my uh, flow trawl for my latex based paints. Uh, here's my little measuring cup. I used about um, three ounces in uh, my gun here and you just want to mix that in. I definitely always strain your paint so that you don't get any chunks in your gun and then you are good to go. So um, if I need any more Floetrol, if it's not 
spraying very well, then I can absolutely come back and, and add that. So everything's ready in here. I have my ventilator and my gun and my gloves, but all six chairs. And then um, it took about four hours to tape off the hutch yesterday, uh, but I did get it uh, primed and it's looking really nice. So the inside's gonna be original. So everything is going as planned. So I'm gonna start uh, doing the top coat. I have three coats today. And uh, then tomorrow I will be sealing. Everything's supposed to be picked up at 10 a.m. from the movers by the movers on uh, Friday. So looking forward to that, finishing up this set for my client. And then the chairs are immediately going to um, TNL upholstery so they can take the caning out and put the inserts in and reupholster the seats. So very exciting. My client's so excited. I'm so excited. Just gonna have a whole new dining room. So let's get going. It's time to seal. I have my semi-gloss polyacrylic and my uh, ventilator. I have it strained into my uh, Wagner sprayer. Everything's looking great. Um, have uh, three coats, top coats on top of the primer. So all the chairs had great coverage. Great, great coverage. I got all the hardware back on of the hutch. Really sets it off. Um, tonight after my husband gets home, he's gonna help me uh, staple the um, chicken wire back in, which is gonna give a nice contrast as well. So I'm so excited to see it all together tonight. So I have a uh, three coats of polycrylic to get on, and then um, that will probably take uh, the whole rest of the day, and then my husband will get home about 4.30 and help me do that. So uh, we're well on our way. Pickup is tomorrow. Um, gosh, I can't wait. I'm so excited for her. She's taking it straight away to get the upholstery on, so I'll have to stay tuned for uh, final pictures of the hutch and the table and chairs and everything together in our home. So, so excited, let's get going.